In the last video, we saw that alkenes act as nucleophiles toward good electrophiles, and we saw that the hydrohalic acids, HX, are among those good electrophiles. The elemental dihalogens, Cl2, Br2, and I2, are also good electrophiles. They have very weak sigma bonds, in part because the atoms themselves are pretty large and very low energy sigma star xx orbitals. They're actually very good electrophiles. So let's try to predict what would happen if an alkene reacted with bromine, Br2. The homo of the alkene, pi cc, would donate into the lumo of Br2, sigma star Br Br. By analogy to the reaction with Hx, we can see that we'd make a new carbon bromide bond, kick out the Br minus, and be left with a carbocation. Then we would imagine that the carbocation's empty p orbital could be filled from either side by that Br minus, giving us a mixture of stereoisomers. In fact, the reaction between alkenes and Br2 does give dihalides, where we add a bromine atom to each of the carbons that was in the alkene, but we only get the trans diastereomer, zero of the cis. This implies that something must be wrong with our predicted mechanism. Since our prediction got the stereochemistry wrong, let's focus on the part of our mechanism where we anticipated getting a mixture. The Br- coming in to either side of that carbocation's p orbital. Clearly, there must be something else going on here. We know that the carbocations are extremely hungry for electrons. And the bromine atom that's next door has some big lone pairs that are nearby. If the bromine just leans over a little, sharing one of its lone pairs and making a weird looking three-membered ring, then we'd satisfy everybody's octets. Then, if the Br- minus that's still floating around came by wanting to donate into something, the only available acceptor orbitals would be sigma star CBr, which we know are largest here, on the opposite side from where the first bromine is. If Br- minus goes ahead and adds into one of those sigma star orbitals, then we get the observed stereochemical outcome. The bromines add anti in a stereospecific way. This strange three-membered ring intermediate is called a bromonium ion, and people have studied them for years. We know they exist from X-ray crystal structures and mountains of other spectroscopic evidence. Another conclusion that researchers drew from all this evidence is that bromonium ions are formed in a concerted process. That is, these two steps happen simultaneously, not sequentially. So the correct mechanism of the reaction between an alkene and Br2 shows two sets of arrows. Pi CC donating into a sigma star BRBR -BR and breaking the BRBR -BR bond, while simultaneously a lone pair on bromine donates back into pi star CC. This forms the bromonium ion, which is attacked by BR minus from the back side to give the anti dibromine. There's a variation on this reaction that is quite useful. If we perform it with water or alcohols as solvent, a different type of product is formed. The bromonium ion is formed in the same way, but before the Br- minus has a chance to swim around and find that sigma star CBr orbital, there's another nucleophile available. The lone pairs on the oxygen of the solvent if the solvent donates into sigma star CBr, we make a new carbon-oxygen bond, and after a quick deprotonation, we've installed two new functional groups, an alkyl halide 
and either an alcohol or an ether on the adjacent carbon. You'll notice that I had the solvent attack this sigma star of CBr at the more substituted side of the bromonium ion. I did this on purpose. This reaction is regioselective as well. It turns out that positively charged three-membered rings, like bromonium ions, are opened by attack at the more substituted site. We'll explain the reasons for this in a future video.